well that escalated y'all between the time i saw you guys uh last and now i've seen five patients and that was probably in the last ugh. what was that last 40 minutes 40 minutes yeah um yeah this is why i don't like using that word because shit is the fan <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yaya. I am a family nurse practitioner working in women's health. Um, over here on my channel, we talk a lot about women's health, sexual health, and my life as an MP. And so today, we are actually doing a day in the life. Day in the life? Yeah, we can call it that. A day in the life of a nurse practitioner working telemedicine. So it is... 9 29 a.m on a thursday to work um i don't really have any patients right now yes yeah, so i don't have any patients waiting for me so i figured this would be a great uh time to introduce ourselves and what we're doing for this is this considered a vlog yeah for this vlog uh what did you guys miss because it's 9 30 and i don't just get up and do this and jump on the computer so um let's backtrack a little bit I woke up at 5.45 this morning, um, got myself ready, made breakfast, made lunches, got the girls ready, took them to school, came back and attended my morning brief. In our morning briefs, uh, we talk a little bit about who's in which uh, virtual office with which MAs and um, any important updates that we need to know uh, from the day before. And so the brief was maybe five minutes this morning because there's really no changes. I work for a family planning, sexual health, with some women's health um, organization. And before COVID, we all went to the clinics, right? The telemedicine did actually not exist at all pre-COVID. COVID happened and, you know, the higher ups decided to introduce telemedicine. Um, and so we kind of moved over to patients that we don't have to physically touch to telemedicine and so for example patients who need birth control refills or need their birth control counseling um, or patients who have uh, problem visits you know or concerns or symptoms that we can diagnose clinically meaning we can diagnose it based off of your symptoms right uh, patients who are hormone therapy replacements um, those visits we don't have to physically see you right in person we don't have to put you on the exam table and examine you um, patients who need std screening um, so these patients we see virtually and then if we have to send you out for your labs for your hormone replacement therapy or for your prep or for std screening then that's all done electronically sends over to the lab you just kind of show up at the lab or make an appointment with the lab and drop off your specimen and we get your results and contact you. We have it organized to where we have, I want to say three, three different virtual offices at, at any given day. There are at least three different virtual offices. There is a clinician or a provider that's assigned to one of those virtual offices along with an MA. Um, oh my gosh, this is like really popping. saying much um, but let's go back to it so each day um, a provider is assigned a specific virtual office along with an MA and we kind of run the virtual offices I typically am in the birth control or the problem one today however I am a floater meaning that I kind of um, keep an eye on all of the virtual offices if I notice that there are multiple patients in one office where a provider cannot get to them then I jump in and see that patient so this keeps this makes it this help prevents um, long wait times um, and then it also prevents um, patients from leaving without being seen right because I mean honestly if I'm sitting on my phone or computer waiting for 10 minutes for a visit and no one has addressed me 
um, I'm probably going to leave thinking it's not working or so. So that's where myself and the floater Emmy uh, comes into play. So when I'm a floater, I don't see as many patients as I normally would if I am assigned a virtual office because I'm just backup, right? I'm just the backup um, provider. Um, when I am assigned a virtual office, depending on which office that I'm in, I may see 20 patients for that day. You know, if I'm in the birth control office, if I'm in like the problem office, um, and I hate calling it the problem office, but if I'm in like the symptom office, then I may see 13 to 16 patients that day. Um, some of them I obviously can't treat because some of them, the complexity of their, their symptoms are too much to treat virtually and I would rather them go into the clinic. So some of them, I will see them, kind of screen them for their symptoms and say, mm, well, you know, let's bring you into the office. So let's do a pelvic exam um, or let's do a wet mount or something like that. Um, but yeah, so today I'm kind of hanging out. Um, there's only one patient. I think, I don't know why, but to, this morning has been kind of, um, I don't want to say that too loud just because, um, you know, once you say that, psh, she hits the van and you have the 20 patients waiting. But we have just one patient in the hormone therapy replacement um, virtual office and that patient is already assigned an MA if you've seen them and the provider is already assigned um, to that office so that provider would see that patient. Now, for example, if there were two patients that were in this hormone therapy replacement um, virtual office because these patients... Um, because it usually takes a little longer seeing these patients, more than 15 minutes, we schedule them 30 minutes apart. So if the provider that's assigned to this virtual office was already with another patient and she had another patient waiting, then myself and the Floden MA will take that patient, right? The patient that was waiting. Um, so that is it. I hope that all makes sense, right? I hope it makes sense. If you guys you know, have questions about it, comment down below, kind of let me know. Um, what some of your questions are. I personally like work in telehealth, you know, there were so because we are a little, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get caught up on some of my education because I am on that naughty list when it comes to my education and um, I'm gonna knock some of those out and um, see patients in between. I am going to probably check back in with you guys during lunch or or so obviously I can't have the camera recording while I'm seeing a patient because of HIPAA violation but I kind of could kind of tell you guys a little bit about what I see throughout the day well that escalated y'all between the time I saw you guys uh, last and now I've seen five patients and that was probably in the last ugh, that's 40 minutes 40 minutes yeah um yeah this is why i don't like using that word because shit is the fan um and this is me as the floater seeing five patients so you know what i'm doing now is i'm just charting finishing up um a patient's chart um she was just a birth control refill um, she liked her pills, it was working well, so we just refilled it for the next year. But she also needed to do like a follow-up to come back to repap. Um, so in addition to finishing up her notes for this visit, I have to go ahead and edit um what am I editing? I have to go ahead and edit her notes for her follow-up plan. You guys can hear. <laughs> I have my lawn guy outside. He is literally cutting the lawn outside of my bedroom window. And I think that's like one of the downfalls of working at home because all you hear everything. And I'm so glad that, I don't, at least I don't think the patients can hear it. They haven't complained about it before. So two patients in our hormone therapy replacement. Um, yeah, there are two patients in our hormone therapy replacement virtual office but one of already one of which the provider has already seen and she just needs to see the other one so i think she can handle that i don't need to jump in and besides it's only been six minutes into the visit which means that they're not ready for a provider yet so i'm gonna let the other provider um take care of that one
So y'all, I had started my follow, follow, follow. Where is it? Follow up. Here we go. So y'all, I had started my um my education, and I got like halfway through one of them and I need to do I think six before we got busy so my plan is to my plan is to actually um, finish that one by the end of the day so we're not gonna do it on lunch because um, lunchtime is lunchtime but I am looking forward to lunch and going and getting me a coffee I have not done that in a while Usually, this is the first week back to school, guys. So, my house is super duper duper quiet because the kids are in school. And usually, when the kids are home, I have lunch with the kids. And so, I'm like running out trying to make a lunch with them, enjoying lunch, and so forth. But now that they're not home, um, I'm actually quite bored being inside for lunch. So, I'm gonna make sure I go outside and get some sunshine. Probably go through the drive through at Starbucks and get me a, a coffee. And I'm probably gonna regret it because I'm gonna have really bad heartburns later. But I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take this L. I'm gonna take it. It's worth it because I just really want some nice coffee. We're at Starbucks. Good afternoon, what can I get for you today? Hi, can I have the bacon and gouda sandwich? Of course, anything else? And then can I also have a grande white chocolate mocha um, hot, please? Grande white chocolate mocha? Mm hmm Anything else? No, that's all. Okay, it's going to be 9 dollars the window. Alright, thank you so much. Thank you. 9 dollars guys. I'm gonna stay my behind at home for the rest of the week. I'm not doing this anymore. Can you imagine? 9.85 every day. I'm literally going to go I'm gonna sit out in the patio for lunch since I want to be outside so much. Hey, so we are back from lunch. Well, no, I still have a good 20 minutes left in my lunch. But we're back from Starbucks, and let me tell you, uh, the bacon gouda sandwich, it didn't make it. It had no choice. I ate that thing before I got to my neighborhood. But I've got my coffee, and I'm already feeling jittery. Let me stop. I'm going to show you guys a couple of the resources that I use um, regularly. I wouldn't say on a daily basis, but regularly when I am talking to my patients about birth control. Um, one of which is going to be the contraceptive the contraceptive technology book this one was actually gifted um, to all of the providers from our organization um, so I haven't really opened up this one yet because I had actually purchased it um, a year and a half ago and so this is my copy of the pocket one um, this is really good at introducing you to the different birth control methods when to start them um, contraindications like side effects and so forth um, so that's a great introduction and their website is very very good as well and they also hold an annual conference um, about women's health birth control con or contraception as well um, the other thing that I use and I use this one mostly now um, is the Managing Contraceptive Pill Patients and Other Hormonal Contraceptions um, by Dickey. So I really, really like this one for managing side effects. Like I know what the birth control methods are, I know what the initial side effects are and so forth, but sometimes I have patients that come in uh, complaining of a certain side effect. So this kind of helps me um, manage their side effects and help me kind of switch it to a different kind of uh, hormonal birth control or pill or so forth. And then lastly, the other one is actually on my phone and it is the, um, here's the problem. When I go to look for something, I can't find it, but I bet you if I was on the computer. So it's the CDC um, Mac, by, um, Mac app. And this kind of actually lets you know or kind of help guide you um, and can let you know 
if a contraception is contraindicated based on a patient's medical condition or medications that they're taking. So sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have a patient and I'm listening to their health history and let's say, for example, they're taking a medication and I'm like, oh, that medication sounds like it might be contraindicated. I can just click on the app, um, go into the therapy that they're on, whether it's anticonvulsant therapy, antimicrobial therapy, click on it and kind of see if it's contraindicated. So those three resources are really, really, really good. I use them very regularly. Um, I would say in a week, I will probably look at the Mac app once. Um, and then my Dickie book. I just always have it on deck just in case I need to remember like how to change the pill based on the side effects that they're having. Um. Okay guys, it is 3.20 in the afternoon and uh, we only have a couple of patients more to go for the rest of the day. Um, the next patient schedule is at 3.30. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to go ahead and grab a snack because I'm kind of hungry and yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> so I did find me a cookie. So we're gonna eat that. Um, oh. 3.20, usually I get off work at, mm, so good, about 4.45, 5 o'clock. What I'm going to do is if I don't have any patients scheduled, if I'm not seeing anyone at 4.45, I'm going to change my clothes and something a little bit more comfortable and then head out to go get the kids. And um, that would be the end of my day. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy this cookie. So okay guys it is now 4 44 and i am done for the day i am finished i've seen my last patient since the last time i've seen you guys i've only seen like two patients and that's okay i am finished i've closed out my computer <laughs> And I've already changed my clothes. I'm gonna grab my purse and we are going to get the girls. So that is going to wrap up today's vlog, day in the life of a nurse practitioner working telemedicine. If you like this vlog, if you wanna see more vlogs, if you like my channel, um, go ahead and subscribe, join the family, share this video and comment down below. It's time to tell me what other videos you'd like to see. Until next time. Hi.